here um, and fix you, but because you want to just uh, open real quick and just talk about the bowl and then we'll take questions. Yeah, just give me a quick second here. I'm trying yep. to get a few things at my desk. <laughs> All right. Okay. I hope everybody's doing well. Um, excited, you know, as a program to be headed out to San Diego, beautiful, beautiful city. And I uh, would like to thank Mark Neville and Bob Bollinger, uh, our team, and, and uh, just met with my captains, putting together our, our bowl calendar and schedule. They're excited. You know, a lot of my guys have never been that far uh, west and chance to go play against a team that we uh, obviously have not played against since I've been here. And, team with a lot of uh, history behind them and, and UCLA and I think it's going to be a great matchup look forward to getting to know them and seeing what their uh, what their team is all about I know they've done a great job this year and I think they just put up 60 points against their rival so great opportunity you know part of bowl games is life experience and I think getting a chance to go out to a city that most of our guys haven't seen right there on the Pacific Ocean and get to go to the San Diego Zoo or SeaWorld and see a ship. Uh, I think we're touring a, a Navy ship. I was actually born in San Diego uh, in Coronado Island at the Naval base over there. So pretty neat for me to get a chance to come back to where I was born and play in a bowl game. Uh, and then to get to do it in a professional baseball stadium. I've never played in a baseball stadium. So that'll be a fun experience. Um, but look forward to it. I know our guys are excited and look forward to getting ready to play. Any questions? All right, David, what you got? Uh, this may be going not really towards what people are going to be asking today, but with, I, I didn't realize you were, were born in San Diego. How much time did you spend there as a kid? Like how, when was the last time you were there? I've been out there several times. Uh, I didn't live there long as a, my dad was in the Navy at that time. Um, but I did live in Los Angeles until I was in the fourth grade. So we lived on the West Coast up until then and then I moved to Kansas you know where I remember my childhood basically from that point on but uh when I coached at Southern Cal I was, you know recruited that area when I coached at Montana I recruited that area when I coached at University of Kansas for the first two years I recruited Southern California so I have a lot of you know memories friends acquaintances my father lives in West LA uh, with his wife so I have family in California still and it's going to be a great trip. Jonas. Hey, Coach, th throughout the years, most of the state's bowl games have been played in the East Coast or, you know, right. somewhere on the South. How big is this for the exposure of the program for you guys to take your brand out west for a bunch of fans who've never seen NC State football before? Yeah, well, they've seen Phillip Rivers. <laughs> <laughs> you know, he was out there a long time, so they have a little bit of idea what Wolfpack football is all about. Uh, but you're right, you know, we're on Fox. It's a nationally televised game in the evening against uh, a team that has an incredible tradition uh, in UCLA. Um, and then obviously their, their uh, home base is about two and a half hours north of San Diego. So I expect them to have quite a crowd. But uh, it's a great opportunity to, you know, get to a different place on the map somewhere a long ways from here and create some exposure uh, for the ACC out in California. Brett. Dave, above and beyond the, the social aspects that you've, you've already mentioned, what, what does it mean, what would it mean to your program and specifically to this group to be able to bring home a trophy for this season and, you know, to get that 10th win, something that's only been done one time in, in program history? Yeah, the 10th win is very meaningful uh, to this staff, to this team, to our football family something uh it's a legacy thing you know this these seniors want to say that they were you know one of only two teams and 130 plus years of football uh, that were able to accomplish that so it's very meaningful you know there's a lot of other reasons to win the game but that's one of the things that, you know you talk about the big picture of winning a 10th game you know and where that'll put us in the rankings i'm sure that'll move us into the top 15 um which is meaningful for these guys as well Patrick Welter. 
Coach, you guys maybe had even bigger goals than the Holiday Bowl, but the season ends on a high note beating UNC. Do you feel like this is an adequate, adequate reward for what you've accomplished this bowl game? Yeah, you know, I think all three of the bowls that we were at kind of between were, were great bowls. You know, I think any of those three that would have picked us, uh, obviously the travel could have been easier for us going to Florida than California. But once you get to the destination, I'm not sure there's many places in the world that are as nice as that town. Uh, in my experience down there, it's a beautiful place. So it's a great reward uh, to be, you know, going to Florida or California for a bowl game. Uh, we're very excited about the opportunity. James. Dave, you've already had multiple players who had the option to go pro announced they were going to come back for you guys next year. What does that say about the culture of your program to see guys make decisions like that so quickly? Mm -hmm. I think it says a lot. You know, I think it kind of answers your question with action <laughs> more so than my words. You know, these young men have a lot of people in their ears, a lot of people telling them what to do and that they trust us, that they know that they're going to have another opportunity to be developed by great people, that they love being around these guys and their coaches and says a lot about the culture that's here. And, you know, that's something that we've worked really hard, not just as coaches, but as players to have that type of room, to have that type of setting, a uh, place that you love walking into and working and the family environment. So, yeah, I think it's very meaningful. Um, and they're seeing teammates like Emeka come back and, and look at what he accomplished by doing that, you know, he had a remarkable season. Um, so I think, you know, seeing the proof, Bradley Chubb came back, had a great year. Ryan Finley came back, had a great year. These guys that have done that have benefited uh, in most cases from that. And just to follow up, did, did you guys practice this week? Did you give them the week off? Uh, what, what was that like for you? No, we needed some time to heal up, man. That, that UNC week, our whole team had the flu. Uh, and our staff had it the following week. So, yeah, we've been trying to just get healthy around here. Uh, giving the guys, this is finals week right now. We're focused on just getting healthy and finishing strong in the classroom, and then we'll pick things back up. Thanks. Yep. Todd Gibson. Yeah, Dave, these extra practices are, are very important to young players, I assume, too. Just are there a few uh, players that you could uh, maybe identify that where these extra bowl practices might really be uh, – uh, beneficial for them. There's some, maybe some players we don't know about. You know, I think there's probably 50. Uh, all of the guys that took the lion's share of the reps for the season that you guys watched, you know, we're going to try to get them a chance to really get in the weight room. You know, I want to see what the guys that were twos and threes can do. You know, it's, uh, it doesn't matter which player you're talking about, but, you know, the, the Caden Fordhams and Jordan Pools and Demi Sumos and you know, Thornton Gentry, Sean Hill, Lyndon Cooper, Travali, I mean, Julian Gray. Uh, there's so many freshmen or redshirt freshmen that we want to get out there and work with. And, you know, Aaron McLaughlin, Ben Finley, there's the list goes on. You know who they are. But there's a lot of guys that need to, you know, not just get reps, but for us to be able to tell them, like, hey, here's what we saw you got from now until spring ball to work on these things. It, it really does give them kind of a litmus test of what they need to do better getting ready for spring football. Jonas. Coach, um, to follow up on the, on the question that James had earlier, guys are already announcing that they are returning. Have you noticed that it's kind of building excitement a little bit uh, ahead of schedule. Like usually there's excitement for the next season after the bowl or doing spring ball, but have you noticed like it's building more excitement earlier with those guys coming back? Yeah, it's kind of funny. I mean, it's uh, everything's sped up, you know, everything. So I'm not surprised by it. Uh, it. It does build excitement for next year, not only with the, the public, but with our own roster. I think guys are excited about who all is coming back and there's more of them, you know, they're, eventually going to make decisions one way or the other that'll come out. And, you know, once we know everybody, you guys will find out. I'm, I'm not going to be a spokesman for who's coming back. I'm allowing these guys to have that opportunity to get their time in the sun. David. Yeah, Coach, do you have concern about, you know, fans being able to make this trip and, you know, right after yeah. the holidays, it's, it's a East Coast, West Coast. It's not cheap. 
No, I know. Yeah, it's it's that's the negative uh, of going out there. It's definitely going to be a um, more expensive ticket than it would have been going to Orlando or Jacksonville. So, I, you know, absolutely. I, I would love to have Wolfpack Nation pack in the stadium, but I understand that's a lot to ask. So I know we'll have some fans that can go. We'll have some fans that can't. And it's unfortunate. You know, you would love for your fan base to, to be able. They're so good to us here and to be able to be a part of that. But um, the ones that can make it, I'm, you know, look forward to having them there with us. And the ones that can, I know they'll be tuned in. Brett. David, the month between the Carolina game and the bowl game, do you anticipate anybody who has been hurt and hasn't been playing being able to come back and play in the bowl game? Yeah, Devin Boykin, we should get back. Um, feel really good about him being back with us. Um, Chris Tootle is a possible. Uh, none of the other players, um, will be back. Thanks. Good luck. Thank you. Rob. Yeah, I know it's been many years, Dave, but what are your memories of the matchups you had when you were at SC against UCLA and what, what a, does it, is it sort of akin to NC State and Carolina? Yeah, that's a unique rivalry. Um, uh, very similar, you know, with, within 30 miles of each other. Uh, same blue team over there that nobody liked when I was at USC and a lot of hatred between them. Uh, they, they used to, there's a big Bruin on their campus. There's a big Trojan on Southern Cows. And they actually would have um, security guards guard those during the week because their students would come over and uh, vandalize them throughout the week. Uh, but yeah, it was a great robbery, man. It was, and at that time, they were both really good football teams um ucla was at, at that time really good football team so yeah that was a great robbery game playing it at the rose bowl or in the coliseum you know two hundred thousand seat stadiums a lot of people there jonas coach i know i know bowl games are part business trip but you just said you're going back to your, your your birthplace and there's so many sites to see there is there one thing you're looking forward to doing in your free time or the time you got you got out with the fellas um, that you look forward to seeing in san diego yeah i, I love sea world man i've always enjoyed sea world so i'll definitely be taking that in um i'm not sure i need to talk to you know the bowl folks down there on the uh trip to the navy ship i've been on several myself so you know, I don't know if I'll be a part of that or if I'll be going to the, the zoo that day. I have to figure out if it's optional or not optional. But uh, I'm excited about the whole thing, man. Just I love going to bowl games with our team. I think it's just a great experience. And it's fun seeing the players who haven't had, you know, the years like we have to travel and see all the things that are out there. It's This will be a great learning experience, cultural experience for them. Matt. Kind of along those lines, Coach, you can correct me if I'm wrong. You didn't get the real bowl experience last year in the Gator Bowl in terms of – did that make you appreciate, maybe made some of the older players appreciate more of the experience of what you get out of a bowl? Probably so. Uh, you know, last year we went down there the day before. It was like a road trip. So, yeah, I think for sure. And, you know, most of these guys will tell you that the bowl games are more fun when you win too. So, <laughs> You know, one of the more fun bowls we've had recently was the Sun Bowl because we won it, you know, and I think that's part of it. You got to get ready to go win a game and balance your your, your fun and work race ratio that you have. But uh, these guys have been phenomenal for two years. This team has been together pretty much. And it will be nice to have a four to five day window to go do something special with them. Gary Hong. Yes, Dave, you said you set your uh, bowl calendar. Uh, when does the team leave and how many uh, uh, how many days do you have out there? Yeah, it's not for me to distribute yet, Gary. So once we have that, we'll give it to you. All right, thanks. All right, I believe that's all the hands. Coach, thank you. All right, thank you guys. Have a good one.